Hollywood, California, Monday, June 8th. The Max Radio Theater, presented from its new home on Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood, California. Lux presents Hollywood. Such great personalities as William Powell, Myrna Loy, W.S. Van Dyke, Lita Barra, James Seymour, Minna Gumbel, Porter Hall, and many others will take part in this presentation sent to you by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, the beauty soap of the stars. Appearing before a distinguished Hollywood audience, Mr. Powell, Miss Loy, and a cast of 18 great players present the play that has broken box office records from coast to coast, The Thin Man. And as producer tonight, we present the director who did The Thin Man on the screen, together with such triumphs as Naughty Marietta, Trader Horn, Rose Marie, I Live My Life, and countless other smash hit pictures. Mr. W.S. Van Dyke. Mr. Van Dyke. Hello, everybody. Well, it's a great scene at the Lux Radio Theater tonight. And our audience, we have Betty Davis, Jimmy and Lucille Gleason, Bob Armstrong, Ole Olson of Olson and Johnson, Stu Irwin, Jimmy Starr, famous communist, Evelyn Venable, Mr. and Mrs. Leon Schlesing Schlesinger. Maybe it would interest you a little inside information on the show we are doing tonight, The Thin Man, and about William Powell and Myrna Loy, who are going to do it for you. As you know, The Thin Man was a best-selling novel by Dashiell Hammett. Hunt Stromberg, down at the studio, MGM, got a hold of it and brought it to me. Woody, he said, if you'll make this picture, I'll buy the story. Well, I read it, and while it was a good enough mystery story, there was something else about the book that struck me. Here was something new and fresh and very charming, a romance between a man and his wife. It's a story of a couple of kids that understood each other and had a blessed confidence in each other. Beneath all the casualness and all the wise cracking, there's a lovely, wholesome relationship. Something really deep and sweet and inspiring. Well, we decided to make the picture. Albert Hackett and Francis Goodrich wrote a swell script. William Powell and Myrna Loy played the parts. And how? They played them beautifully. Because Powell was just Powell and Loy was just Loy. Both of them wise, cracking all the time and clowning right through the picture. I suppose you know that plenty of motion pictures take from two months to a year to shoot. We did The Thin Man in 16 days, retakes and all. Of course, it wasn't a pretentious picture. We didn't make it as one. I hate epics. But it is evident that people liked it. It has been very interesting to study out how they could tell this story on the radio. Bill and Myrna have had a lot of fun getting it ready for you, just as they did making the picture. And from the original story, from the original motion picture cast, we have, and are fortunate in having, Minna Gombo, Porter Hall, William Henry, and Thomas Jackson here tonight. So here we go, with William Powell and Nick Charles and Myrna Loy as Nora in The Thin Man. Here they come, Bill Powell and Myrna Loy. We're in a fashionable cafe, Momart, New York City. It's Christmas Eve, and the well-appointed dining room is filling rapidly. From the bar comes a good-looking young fellow of about 35, tall, casual, and worldly-wise. He's Nick Charles, the well-known private detective, played by William Powell. And he's waiting for his charming wife, Nora, played by Myrna Loy. As he takes his place at the table, a young girl on the other side of the room recognizes him and hurries over. I beg your pardon. Aren't you Mr. Nick Charles, the detective? No, I am. Uh... Yes, I'm Nick Charles. I thought I recognized you. My name is Dorothy Wynand. Oh, yes? How do you do? you mind if I sit down for a no, moment? No, but uh, I'm expecting my wife a few minutes. You don't mind explaining her presence to her? Oh, of course. That's my fiancé over there at the other table. Oh, well, that makes everything all right, doesn't it? Sit down. Thank you. Uh, your name is... Uh... Dorothy Wynand. I'm Clyde Wynand's daughter. Clyde Wynand's daughter. Uh... Oh, yes, of course. Your father was having some trouble about one of his inventions a few years ago. I handled the case for him. I know. That, that's why I want to speak to you now. Oh. Well, I'm not practicing anymore, Miss Wynett. You see, I've retired. Please, Mr. Charles. I need you. Oh. What seems to be the trouble? It's dead. He went away about three months ago, and I haven't heard from him. Not a word. I'm worried sick. Oh, I wouldn't if I were you. After all, he's an inventor. 
he gets an idea he wants to work on, it's only natural that he should hide away somewhere. He's done it before. Yes, but never for three months. Did you see him before he left? No. Mr. McCauley was the only one he spoke to. Well, McCauley and Julia Wolfe. She's dead, secretary. Julia Wolfe. Oh, yes, I really have met her. And McCauley is your father's lawyer, isn't he? Yes. His lawyer and his secretary both speak to him before he leaves, but no one knows where he went. He wouldn't tell them. What about your mother? He wouldn't tell her either? No. Mother and dad aren't... They haven't seen each other for some time. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know just what I can do for you. Why don't you speak to Macaulay? Maybe he's heard from your father and forgotten to let you know. Oh, well, I'll call him now. That's a girl. Let me know how it turns out, will you? Of course. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll be here. Madam, you can't bring that dog in here. Dogs aren't allowed. I'm sorry, but uh, I'll be here after. After? Come here, boy. Here. Down, yeah, boy. Madam, down. it isn't only your dog. We allowed everyone. Oh, here you are. Aster. Quiet, Aster. Quiet. Slow, Nora. I hear you brought the dog. I didn't bring him. He brought me. I think the doorman's mad, Miss. Madam, I'm afraid you'll have to take the dog outside. It's all right, Joe. It's my dog uh, and uh, my wife. You might have mentioned me first. But, Mr. Charles, are you sure that... Uh... Of course I'm sure. He's well-trained. He'll behave himself. And nobody might bite someone. No, no. Only me, Joe. He only bites me. Yes, he's fussy about what he eats. Go ahead, Joe. I'll be responsible for it. Very well, sir. If you say so, sir. There you are, my dear. See what an influential husband you've got? You do stand in the door, man. Mr. Mr. Charles. Oh, uh, yes, Dorothy? May I introduce my fiancé, Andy Reed, Mr. Charles? How do you do? How do you do, sir? Any luck, Dorothy? Yes, he's just around the corner. Your father? No, no, Mr. McCall. We're going to see him now. Oh, fine, fine. Uh, oh, Annette? Yes, my dear? Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, Miss Winant, Mr. Reed, my wife. How do you do? How do you do? I'm sorry we have to rush, but you'll excuse us, Mr. Charles. Of course. Uh, we're to Normandy for a couple of weeks. Why don't you drop around? Thanks, we will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Charles. Goodbye. Pretty girl. You like blonde. You got tight? Only you, darling. Lanky brunettes with wicked jaws. Who is she? Dorothy Winant, daughter of Clyde Winant. I worked on a case for her father. Some nut wanted to kill him. Charming. What's the matter now? Winant disappeared. Dorothy's afraid something happened to him. Has anything happened to him? My darling wife. How do I know? Funny, though. That secretary of his ought to know something. Secretaries usually do. Who is she? Julia Wolfe. Smart girl, Julia. I always suspected she had some kind of hold on Winant. That's why he kept her on. Maybe you ought to give her a ring. Of course. Oh, just to say hello. Mm, maybe. Want a nickel? Hmm? No, 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 I've got one. I'll be right back. Hello? I want the Skylar, 40962. No, it's Skylar. Uh, that's right, 4. Hello? Yes, Julie Wolf speaking. Who? Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Charles. Yes? Well, what was it you wanted to... Oh. Oh, no, I don't. He didn't tell me. Not a word. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. Goodbye. Morelli. Coming. Well, who was that? Nick Charles. The detective? He wanted to know where Winant was. Oh, yeah? Why? He didn't say. Did anyone see Winant come here that night? The night you and him had the scrap? I don't know. Oh, no? Well, I guess I'll scrap. Wait a minute, Morelli. Where are you going? Oh, taking a little stroll, that's all. If Nick Charles is going to pop up around here, I want to be far away when he does. Ah, oh, don't be a fool, Morelli. Fool, huh? Hey, listen, sister, I got a record nine inch and to come face to face with no dick. Sit down, Morelli. You need money, don't you? Yeah. What about it? You got some? Plenty. I'm Winan's secretary. Oh, you? Yeah? What do you mean by that? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Your friend Pierre serves good dinners, Nick. Mm-hmm. All right. You still didn't tell me what Julia Wolf had to say. Nothing. She didn't know where he was, that's all. Finished? Finished. Let's get out. We'll grab a cab and get back to the hotel. Ready and willing. Where's my purse? Come on, Esther. Joe, call me cab. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Asta, be quiet. Stop it. Hello? Yes? Who is it? Mr. Oh, he is. I see. Thank you. Oh, Nick? Yeah? It's Mr. McCauley. He's on his way up. McCauley? I wonder what he wants. Isn't he Warren's lawyer? Yeah. Maybe he's got some news. Well, he ought... Say, you're worrying an awful lot about this business. Forget it. I'll open it. Hi, Mrs. Charles. Come in, Mr. McCauley. Hello, McCauley. Well, hello, Charles. Well, how are you? Fine. Sit down. Uh, thanks. <clears throat> uh, Dorothy told me you were here. I took the liberty of coming to see you. Of course. Uh, Charles, uh, what's Mimi up to? Mimi? Oh, Dorothy's mother. Does she have to be up to something? <laughs> she usually is, trying one way or another to get money out of wine. I, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to find out if you were, uh... <laughs> Sleuthing for her. I haven't been a detective four years. Oh, you don't say. Oh, my wife's father died and left her a lumber mill, the Narragage Railroad, and uh, a whole couple of other things. I- I'm looking after them. I see, I see. What's all the fuss about? Is Wynett in hiding? Mm, you know as much about it as I do. I haven't seen him in three months. He sends word through Julie Wolf when he wants money. I give it to her and she gives it to him. Mine? Hello? Oh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Mr. McCauley. Your office. Oh, thank you. Hello? What? He is? Oh, where is he? Oh, very well. Well, he's back in town. Mr. Wynan? Yes, thank heaven. He's waiting for me now. Well, I've got to rush. I'll tell you, it's no joke working for a man like that. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Charles. Goodbye, Charles. Hello? Merry Christmas. Same to you. Almost Christmas, darling. Is that a hint? You can drop it. You get your present at breakfast, not a minute before. See? You know, Nick, I've been thinking. It's funny the way Wynant popped up all of a sudden. Yes. Wasn't it? You think there's anything behind it? Why should there be? Well, I don't know. It just strikes me as being funny, that's all. You're nearer than I am, darling. Hello? Speaking. Oh, hello, Dorothy. What? When? Oh, I see. Well, yes, of course I'll be here. What is it, darling? Darling, what is it? Julia Wolf has just been murdered. <laughs> Listening to William Powell on Myrna Loy and the story of the Thin Man from the stage of the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood Boulevard. Before we go on with the story of Nick and Nora, we want to take you on a quick tour of Hollywood. <laughs> Lobby of the Hotel Roosevelt, where stars and newcomers gather. A young actress just breaking into pictures is telling her friend of her success. Well, there's one thing. I've got one of the best managers in Hollywood, and that means a lot. Oh, but the rules he's laid down for me. Gee, what do you mean, rules? Well, you'd think I was going into training for the Olympics. I've got to lose five pounds. I've got to take lessons in singing and diction, and of course my complexion's got to be perfect. I've got to be more careful than ever not to get little blemishes or enlarged pores and, and what they call cosmetic skin. Thank goodness I know enough to use Lux Toilet Soap regularly, the way everybody around here does. Nine out of ten beautiful Hollywood screen stars use Lux toilet soap and have for years. Here's what the famous Claudette Colbert has to say. When I tell people how simple my complexion care is, 
they always seem surprised. I use cosmetics, of course, but I always use Lux Toilet Soap to guard against cosmetic skin. It's easy to keep skin lovely my way. And now, on with the show of the Thin Man. An hour has gone by since Nick heard about the murder of Julia Wolfe. In the living room of their suite at the hotel, Nick and Nora are listening to the radio. A news reporter is broadcasting the latest developments of the case. And here's the latest news of the Julia Wolfe murder. The police have found out that the beautiful blonde secretary was a gangster's girl and is spreading the dragnet for one Joe Morelli, said to be hiding out somewhere in the city. In Paris today, the Chamber of Deputies... Never mind the Chamber of Deputies. Joe Morelli, that's what I want to know about. Well, did you get any more information out of headquarters? As much as I had. Julia Wolfe was shot and killed about 9 or 9.30. Body discovered on the floor of the living room a little after 11. Who discovered it? That'll surprise you. Mimi Wynan. Dorothy's mother? Right. What was she doing there? I don't know. Where's Clyde Wynan? Still missing. Missing? But Macaulay was going to see him. They had an appointment. I spoke to Macaulay. Wynan never showed up. Nobody knows where he is. It's going to be pretty tough on Dorothy, isn't it? Meaning what? Meaning that it looks as if Clyde Wynan skipped one appointment in order to keep another with Julia Wolfe. You think he killed her? Oh, it's just a guess. You're the detective around here, darling. Oh, that's Dorothy. She said you wanted to see me. There, come in, Dorothy. Thank you. Is anyone here? That's Nora. Have a seat. Oh. Hello, Dorothy. I'm I'm sorry for breaking in on you like this. Oh, that's all right. We're used to it. Anything wrong? Ju- Julia Wolf is dead. Yes, we know that. Here's the gun she was shot with. What are you trying to tell me? That you did it? Yes. I hated her. She she kept me from seeing my father. I went down there to ask her where he was. She wouldn't tell me. I shot her. Where did you hit her? Why, in the heart. Pretty good shot you are. What did she do? She fell down. Did she make any sound? Didn't scream? I don't know. Which way did she fall? She she fell over backwards. Oh, yes? People fall toward a shot, you know, not back from it. I knew you were lying. Oh. Oh, come on, come race up. Where did you get this gun? I bought it. In a pawn shop. I thought so. <laughs> Why did you say you did it? <laughs> Whom are you trying to shield? Oh, please, don't ask me. you got to tell me. Nick, <laughs> let me handle this, will you? Dorothy, look at me. Nick is trying to help you. Why don't you help him? You were trying to shield your mother, weren't you? No. Your father, then. <laughs> Dorothy. Yes. My father. Why did you think he did it? Mother was the first one to find Julia Wolf. She saw something in Julia's hand and... And she took it. What was it? A watch chain. It, it belonged to my father. So you think your father did it? I don't know. I don't know. Did your mother turn the chain over to the police? No, she she kept it. She didn't tell them anything about it. But she showed it to you? Yes. Why did your mother go to Julia Wolfe's apartment in the first place? She she went to us for money. Oh, money again, huh? <laughs> yes? Oh, uh, have him come up, please. Who is it? Uh, Dorothy, uh, I wonder if you'd mind waiting in the bedroom. Of course. It'll be only a minute. Well, Nick? It's Mimi Wynant. Alone? She's never alone. Thought of his brother was with a screwy college kid. And uh, some guy by the name of Chris Jorgensen. Jorgensen? Who's he? Macaulay told me about him. A hanger-on type. I think he's out for Mimi's dough. But she hasn't any. Maybe that's why she wanted to get some from Julia. I'll take it. Fine. Come in, Mimi. Thank you, Nick. This is my son, Gilbert. How are you? Very well, thank you. And Mr. Chris Jorgensen, he's an old friend of mine. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down. Sit down. Uh, uh, my wife. How do you Mrs. do? Mrs. Wynant, uh, Gilbert Wynant, and Mr. Jorgensen. How do you do? Well, Mimi? Nick, I've never been in such a state in my life. You know, of course, that I was the one who found Julia Wolfe. So we've heard. Oh, my dear, it was terrible. I walked in and there she was, lying dead on the floor. I meant to ask you, Mother, was there much blood? Gilbert, don't be so morbid. But I'm interested in murders. You know, Mr. Charles, I formed a theory about this one already. That's so. In my opinion, the man who did it... Was... Gilbert, be quiet. You don't know anything about it. Oh, but I do. Be quiet. Uh, you were saying, Mrs. Warnham, about finding Julia Wolfe. I was simply petrified, and such a mystery. Clyde Winer's crazy, absolutely crazy to stay away at a time like this. No wonder the police think he had something to do with it. 
What do you think? Oh, I know he didn't, but I wish I could find him. I have something very important to tell him. And Macaulay won't help at all. He thinks I just want money. Well, don't you? <laughs> oh, Nick, you're always teasing. <laughs> Mrs. Wyland, were you alone when you found Julie Wolf? Why, of course I was. Wasn't Mr. Jorgensen with you? I? Certainly not. I don't know anything about it. The first word I had that Julia Wolf was dead was when Mrs. Wyland called me at my club. Oh, she called you? Yes. Why? I beg your pardon. Oh, let's not even talk about it. The thing to do is to find Clyde. And that's what I've come to you for, Nick. You will help me find him, won't you? I'm afraid I can't, Mimi. Oh, Nick, please. Now, Mimi, there are a thousand detectives in New York. Hire one of them. But Clyde knows you. All you have to do is to get in touch with him and tell him that Mimi says everything is all right, but that I've got to see him. I tell you again, I don't want any part of it. Is that final? Final. Well, if that's the way you feel... You turn up, you just help all you can. Give the police every possible assistance. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing in particular. Oh. Well, we'll say good night. Good night. I'm sorry I can't help you, Mimi. the Normandy Hotel? I want to speak to Mr. Charles. Yeah, Nick Charles. Hello, Mr. Charles? Say, I'm sorry I woke you up, but Mr. Charles, I'd like to lay a proposition before you. It's about the murder of Julia Wolf. Well, what's the difference who I am? Oh, wait a minute. All right. Wait a minute. Don't hang up. I'll tell you who I am. But you've got to keep it under your hat. I'm Al Nunheim. Yeah. Nunheim. Now listen. I know who murdered Julia Wolf, see? Sure I do. And I'll spill it to you for five grand. I'll tell you how I know. Because I was outside of her apartment when she was shot. And I saw the one who did it. And I'll spill it to you when I get... Hey, wait a minute. Hey, I can't talk now. I'll call you again. Hello? Hello? Hello, are you still there? Hello? What about the... Oh, my God. I don't know. I'm crank, I guess. He hung up. And you better get back to bed and get some sleep. <laughs> talk to you. That's jolly. Don't you think you'd like to go back to detecting once in a while just for the fun of it? Can't you get to sleep? No. Everybody says you were a grand detective. They were kidding you. I'd like to see you work. Tomorrow I'll buy you a whole lot of detective stories. Oh, that poor girl's in an awful spot. There's nothing I can do to help her. She thinks you can. It wouldn't hurt you to find out if you could, would it? I'm darling, my guess is that Wynant killed Julia and Dorothy knows it. And the police will catch him without my help. Now, please put out the light. I'm tired. Oh, all right. But I'm mad at you. Uh-huh. Nick. Uh-huh. Did you hear a knock? Uh-huh. Shut up, Aster. You want to answer it, Nick? Oh, good Lord. All right, stay in bed. I'll do it myself. Well? Mr. Charles here. Yes? I gotta talk to him right away. What about? What's going on? What's going on? There's someone to see you. Man. That's great. I was afraid I'd have to go to sleep. Come in. Yeah. Um, how about a chair, Mr. Stay where you are, both of you. I got you covered, so don't move. A stick up. No, it ain't a stick up. But I gotta talk to you, Mr. Charles. I want you to tell me something, and I want you to give it to me straight. You get me? Hey, do you mind putting that gun down? Uh, my wife doesn't care, but I'm a very nervous person. Thank you. All right, shoot. I, I mean, uh, uh, what's on your mind? You don't need to tell me you're tough. I heard about you. I'm Joe Morelli. I've never heard about you. I didn't bump up Julia. All right, you didn't. I haven't seen her in three months. 
We were all washed up. Why tell me? Well, I wouldn't have any reason to hurt her. She was always on the up and up with me. But that dirty little rat, Nunheim, well, he got sore because she liked me and hated him. So he put the finger on me. That's all very swell, brother. Only you're peddling your fish in the wrong market. I've got nothing to do with it. Now, listen. The boys used to say that you were okay. A square guy. Now, that's why I'm here. What's the law doing to me? Do they think I did it? Or is it just something else to pin on me? I'll tell you if I knew, but I'm, in, I'm not in on this. Ask the police. Now, that'd be very smart. The boys would love to have me come in and ask questions. They'd like it right down to the end of their blackjacks. Now, I came to you on the level. The boys say you're on the level. Be on the level. I'm on the level. If I knew anything, I'd... Who's that? I don't know. This is your party. Open up. Open up. Is this is the police. The police? Dirty two-timer. Look out, North. Oh. Give me that gun. You rat. I'll show you. Uh, drop that gun. Drop it. You'll go across me, will you? Come on, drop it. it. Give it to me. Give me the gun. Grab it. Grab it. Let me go. Let me go, I said. I'll take that gun. Thanks, officer. You almost had me. Get some water, Joe. Nora. Are you all right? Nora. I'm Inspector Gilbert, the homicide squad. Are you in a good place, Inspector? Who's that woman on the floor? My wife. This guy's shooter? No, he tried to shoot me. I socked her on the jaw to get her out of the line of fire. I guess I hit her too hard. Nora. Oh. Look at me, Nora. Are you all right, darling? Oh. You darn fool. You didn't have to knock me out. I knew you'd take him, but I wanted to see you do it. She's all right. Okay, Slattery. Take Morelli downstairs. Here, come on. Don't Morelli. push. Come on. I said don't push. How'd you people have to pop in, Inspector? We hear this is getting to be a sort of a meeting place for the Wyman family. So we figured we'd stick around in case the old man himself shows up. Then we seen Morelli sneak in, and we decided to come up. I was pretty lucky for you, too. Yeah. Morelli, a friend of yours? I never saw him before. What's he want of you? Wanted to tell me he didn't kill Julia Wolf. What's that to you? Nothing. What did he think it was to you? Ask him. I don't know. I'm asking you. Keep on asking. Oh, so you're going to keep him up, huh? All right, Mr. Charles. I won't bother you tonight, but I'll be in tomorrow morning, and I'll have plenty of things to ask. Good night. Thank you, Inspector Gills. Next time you come, try to stay longer. <laughs> Nick, wake up. It's Christmas. Oh, yeah? Look, here's a telegram for you. It just came. Open it, will you? Probably a touch from somebody. Well? Me. What is it? It's from Clyde Winans. Listen. Will you take charge of investigation on Julia Wolf murder? Communicate with Herbert McCauley. Clyde Winans. Where's it from? Philadelphia. Then he didn't do it, did he, Nick? I don't know. Communicate with McCauley, huh? All right, we'll ask him up here this morning. <laughs> There you are, Macaulay. What do you think? Hmm. Well, he wants you to handle the case. Yeah. Huh? Hmm. Well, what are the chances of you doing it? Slam. Oh, please, Nick. Quiet, dear. I wish you would, Mr. Charles. Uh, uh, would it help any if I could persuade him to meet you? You might. I had word from one myself last night. He gave me a code message to insert in the newspapers in case I wanted to get in touch with him. Well, wouldn't do any harm to put it in. I'm sure you could clear this up. Why not? When only come back, it doesn't look well. He's staying away at a time like this. Yes. Oh, oh, just a minute. For you, Mister McCauley, police department. Police department. Hello. Where? In Allentown. Yes. Well, when's the next train? Right. I'll get that. Well, why not try to commit suicide? They want him to go down and identify him. Well. I guess this changes the whole story, doesn't it? That looks like an admission of guilt. <laughs> oh, I had such hopes. I thought if you got on this case... Oh, uh, well. Well, it's no use thinking about it now. Well, I'm sorry to have wasted so much of your time. You'll excuse me, won't you? Of course. Goodbye. Bye. Well, that's that. What's the matter with you? Oh, the mystery's all gone. And I wanted you to find out who did it. Maybe I will. But why not? I don't believe he did it. Why don't you? No reason. That's fine. But I'm going to find out. Come on, Dr. Watson. We're going places. I want to speak to Inspector Gill. Man to man, 
Mr. Charles. Are you working on this case? Man to man, Inspector Gill, I'm not. But he's interested. I don't mind telling you, I'd rather have you in on the right side. You mean not on Wyman's side? I'd rather have you working with us than against us. So would I. It's a bargain, then. Do you know about the case? I read the papers. What about the suicide? Oh, that's a phony. The men didn't even have to go down. Yeah, I thought it might be. From now on, they're going to think that every thin man over six feet with white hair is Wynum. Do you think that Wynum did it? It looks like he planned something. He shut up his apartment and his shop. But there's nothing yet to clinch it. Fifty will get you hundreds if Wynum didn't do it. Who's your candidate? I haven't got that far yet. I don't think that everything points to Wynum. What about the alibis? They're all okay. Mrs. Wynant, the boy, Dorothy, Macaulay, even Morelli. Uh, what about uh, Jorgens? Hmm? Oh, oh, I'll check on that. <laughs> well, I'm afraid this is kind of dull for you, Mrs. Charles. Dull? I'm sitting on the edge of my chair. Frankly, I'm stunned. I don't know what to do next. What about you, Charles? Me? No, but uh, I've got a hunch. What is it? I got a call last night. I thought it was from a crank. But I've changed my mind. Whoever it was knew something. And I've got a feeling I'll hear from him again. What time is it? Almost ten. Still waiting to hear from the crank? And how? Here, give me that quick. Hello? Yes? Yes? This is Nick Charles? Who? Can't hear you. I said, I can't hear you. I have to speak louder. I, I can't speak any louder. Say, this is Al Nunheim again. You know, I called you last night. Hey, listen. Are you still interested in that proposition? Yeah, huh? All right, then. Now, here's the dope. And get this straight. The man who killed Julia... <laughs> You think Wynett killed Julia Wolf and Nunheim? Right. Why? Two reasons. First off, Mimi Wynett came across with a watch chain. She plucked off Julia's body. Oh, she did, huh? It belonged to Clyde Wynett. Yeah. What's the second reason? A pit. The bullet that killed Nunheim came from the same gun. That's all right, Inspector. All right. It's perfect. Clyde Wynett is guilty of both those murders. Maybe. What? Except he'll still get you a hundred. I say Wynett's innocent. You can say what you want. But I'm spreading a dragnet for that guy over every town in these United States. And I'll get him, too. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Cover all roads leaving city. Pick up Clyde Whited. In man, last seen wearing dark green suit. Clyde Whited. Do you think they'll find him, Nick? He must be in New York. He probably is. Oh, it's getting me down. I saw Dorothy today. Yeah? What? She's broken off her engagement. What for? Well, don't ask me. She was a little hysterical. Something about not wanting to ruin her fiancé's life. Daughter of a murderer and all that. Oh, poor kid. Well, see you later, darling. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to take us for a walk. <laughs> He's just been for a walk. We're going sightseeing, aren't we, Esther? <laughs> Nick, what are you up to? I've got a hunch. I'm going down to look at wine and shop. I'm going to find out why it's closed. Well, why shouldn't he close it? He went away. He went away lots of times when I knew him, but he never closed his shop. I've got to hunt something up. You mean he might be hiding there? I don't know, but this thing's got my goat. I've got to find out. Nick, Nick, I won't have you going down there at this hour of the night. He's a crazy man. He might kill you. It'll be all right. I've got Aster to protect me. All right, go on. Go on, see if I care. But it's a dirty trick bringing me all the way to New York just to make me a widow. You wouldn't be a widow long. You bet I wouldn't. Not with all your money. You dog. Goodbye, darling. Mickey, take care of yourself, won't you? Sure I will. Don't say it that way. Say it as if you meant it. Why, well, I believe that every woman cares. I don't care. I'm just used to you, that's all. Sure. So long, darling. Come on, Esther. Go on, go on. Goodbye. <laughs> call me, darling, please. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Esther. Esther, if you let anything happen to him, you'll never wag that tail again. <laughs> 
Radio Theater's production of The Thin Man, starring William Powell and Arnold Loy, with the music under the direction of Louis Silvers. This is W.S. Van Dyke speaking. We have here tonight the man who wrote the great picture, Lawyer Man, for Bill Powell here. He's a producer, too, but just on the writing end. He's done many great pictures, 42nd Street, The Gold Diggers, King of Burlesque, and lots of others, including an original musical, Ladies in London, which you'll be seeing soon. And here he is, the man whose name you'll see on the screen before the picture starts, one of Hollywood's greatest picture writers. James Seymour. Come here, Jim. Thanks, Woody. I've been a movie writer for ten years. That's the first kind word anybody has said to me. <laughs> Listen, Jim. The average person thinks that a movie writer is a fellow that sits by himself at a typewriter, hammer, hammers out a lot of dialogue, and hands it in. Would you like to correct, correct that impression? I certainly would. <clears throat> Nobody works alone and by himself to make a picture. It's a matter of constant cooperation between producer, director, technician, actors, and the writers. Some of the best story ideas come out of the conferences. Jim, how many writers would you say there are on an average picture? Plenty. Believe it or not, I've seen pictures where there were more writers than actors. If all the people who contributed to the story got screen credit, it would look like a page from the telephone directory. Mm. You've written on both the stage and screen, Jim. Tell the folks how they're different. Well, pictures have less talk, but they tell more in less time. Like concentrated foods, all the good and none of the waste. In the theater, everything must be brought to the audience. On the screen, you take your audience wherever the camera can go. And here's another important point that comes right back to your Lux Radio Theater. On the stage, the star just enters. But on the screen, she's introduced with a big close-up, a picture of the star's face many times larger than life-size. Every time a movie star's complexion is mentioned in this Lux Radio Theater, I think of those close-ups. Those stars just have to be beautiful. And they found that Lux Toilet Soap helps them look their best. Producers know it, too. And that's why it's the official soap in all the great studios in Hollywood. Right, Woody? Right on the nose, Jim. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for asking me. Good night. Good night, Jim. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The Thin Man. <laughs> Nick is on his way to Clyde Wyner's deserted laboratory in a dark and desolate section of the city. His cab veers sharply around the corner and pulls up in front of a gloomy, old, rickety building. Say, mister, are you sure this is the place you wanted? Looks like it. Come on, I said jump. How much are you? A dollar twenty. Or do you want me to wait? No, never mind. Oh, that's good. You know, this ain't no neighborhood to be in at two o'clock in the morning. I want to get out of here. There you are. Thanks. Hello, Alan. Come on, Arthur. Come on, I'll step with you. Hello. Nora, what are you doing here? I beat you down. I want to go with you, Nick. Now, listen. No. You're not going in that place alone, and that settles it. Now get out that skeleton key of yours and open that door. I'm here to stay. All right, come on. Just head. Darling. Nice neighborhood wine and picked out this laboratory. I can almost hear the chains rattling. Do you believe in ghosts, Nicky? There we are. Come in. Be quiet. Nicky, it's dark in here. Yeah, I've got a flashlight, but I close the door. Shh. Master, shut up. What's going on? Which way? Straight ahead. Can you get the lay out of the place? Looks awfully big to me. You can't even see into the corner. Don't let the shadows frighten you. Who's frightened? Hold it. What's the matter? This looks like Wynant's work table. More like a slab in a morgue. Look, Nick. There's a cement floor all around. Yeah, there's probably a lot of weight goes on that table. Come on. Where to now? There's an old desk over there on the wall. I want to take a look at it. What do you expect to find? Darling, if I knew what I'd find, I wouldn't be... Nick. Look at him. See 
up to something. I've seen him scratch the ground like that when, when, when he was looking for... Asta. Asta. Nora, look. Look at this. New cement, listen. Next. It's hollow. I wonder if I could find something to dig it up. There's an iron bar on the table. I just saw it. Ah, good. Now, I guess not the hole in that cement. We'll find out what's under there. Oh, Nick, I'm scared. <laughs> Ask the quiet. You can keep away, Nora. Ask to come here. Uh, once more. Look. There she goes. Ah, uh, uh, through the cement. Nick. <laughs> Ask to get away from there. Get away. Nick, what is it? What's he after? We must get Inspector Gill here. What's under there? A body. Must have been there for weeks. Oh, on them. Just a silver belt buckle with the initials DWR. DWR. Who is that? I got a good idea. That case you worked on, the guy who threatened to kill Wynan. What was his name? Oh, uh, Rosewater. Yeah, Rosewater. He said Wynan tried to steal an invention, didn't he? Yes, but we figured it was just blackmail. Just the same. Wynan wouldn't mind having him out of the way, would he? And according to the doc, the body's been there at least a couple of months. Hmm. That's just about the time Wynan closed the shop. Right. Did you put the skeleton under the fluoroscope yet? Half an hour ago. We found the bullet he was killed with and something in the leg bone. An old piece of shrapnel. Shrapnel? Yeah. Why? Shrapnel in the leg bone. He probably limped. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Well, so long, Inspector. I'm going to pick up my wife, take her home. It's been a long night. So long. Give her my best, will you? Right. Back to the hotel, my sweet. Pack our bags and take a nice trip somewhere. A trip? Oh, no. My soul, woman. I give you three murders and you aren't satisfied. I want you to stay and find one. I did find it. What do you mean? He was down in the shop. Yes. It was his body that was buried there. Wynne's body? Yeah. But they all said it was Rosewater. Oh, that's what they think. What makes you so sure it's Wynne's body? Several things. Clothes, for instance. They were carefully preserved. They were carefully preserved. And the body was just carefully destroyed. The person that killed him counted on one thing, that all skeletons look alike. Well, don't they? Sure. But I remember that Wynette had some shrapnel in his shin. They found it under the fluoroscope. How long has he been dead? A couple of months, anyway. Then he couldn't have committed those other murders. Smart girl. Wynette did. Did Dorothy know? No, nobody but you. I didn't even tell Gil. Why not? I want to lie low till I get the whole dope. I don't want to go off our cock. What are you going to do? I'm going to get the real murderer. I've got an idea. Want to see me take him? Yes. You got a nice evening dress? Oh, I've got a loser. Why? I'm going to have a party, a dinner party. Everything from Russian caviar to camembert cheese. An orchestra behind the palms, the dude lighting. What is this? And I'm going to invite all of the suspects. The suspects? They won't come. Oh, they'll come. I'll have Gil issue the invitations. Nick, who's going to be there? Everybody. You, me, Dorothy, Eric, fiance, uh... Hey, his name's Andy. Uh, right. Macaulay, Mimi, Gilbert, Jorgerson, and Morelli. Oh, darling, what a lovely party. The meaning of what, Mimi? Why were we all rounded up like common criminals and brought to the city? Yes, to eat, Mimi, and talk. Will everyone please be seated? Dorothy here. Thank you. Andy, next to her, please. Oh, but Mr. Charles, please. please. Very well. Mimi, on the other side of Andy. Hey. And Mr. Jorkson, over there, please. Very kind, Mr. Charles. Not at all. Mr. McCauley, next. Of course. Morelli. 
What? Right where you are. Now, say, listen. Sit down. Uh, and, uh, Gilbert, uh, you can sit just opposite Mama. Mr. Charles, I have a theory. Uh, we'll listen to it later. Uh, Inspector Gill, you and your men will stand by, uh, by the door, please. Sure. Fine. Now, Nora, if you'll sit here by me. Delighted, Mr. Charles. A pleasure, Mrs. Charles. Now, we're all ready to begin. Uh, will you please pass the celery, Mrs. Wyatt? No, I will not. I demand to know why we are here. Before dinner? All right. I've got some important news. I've seen one. You've seen you Marble? Marble? Yeah, level. What? What? Certainly, I mean it. That's nothing. I saw him myself. Yes, Mimi? When? Last night. He came to see me in my apartment. Oh, did he? What did he say? He didn't say very much. He wanted to know how I was and how the children were. I'm afraid you're lying, Mimi. <gasps> you see, I really did see wine at last night. Are you kidding? No. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you hold him? Because I found out for certain that he didn't commit the murders. Why do you know that? Well, that's ridiculous. Wait a minute. Let him have his oh, day. Thank you. Morelli, you knew Julia. Was she jipping wine at? Taking dough on the fly? Well... She don't say she is, but I figure she is, yeah. Thank you. Now I'll tell you why no Wynett didn't commit those murders. Three months ago, Wynett found out that Julia was cheating him and was splitting with some man. He went to find the man, and he did. That man was desperate. He knew that he was caught dead to rights. And at prison, staring him in the face, he took the only way out. He killed Wynett. Oh. Terrible to tell you this way, Dorothy, but your father's dead. Dead? He's been dead for three months. Dead. Oh. Oh, darling, don't cry. Oh. oh. I know it's terrible, but isn't it really better this way? Oh, Andy. Andy. You'd better take her home, Andy. Yes, of course. Yeah. Come on, darling. Let them out, Inspector. Oh, open now. Oh, don't cry, darling, please. It'll be all right now. Oh, oh. Okay, Oh, this is absurd. How can Clyde be dead? You said yourself you saw him last night. So I did. I saw him lying buried in his shop. You mean that body? It was Wynant. Perfectly absurd. And the murderer is right here in this room tonight. He's sitting at this table. Huh? Who is it? I don't know. But I thought if we all had a little get-together, we might be able to find out. I'll tell you as much as I know. This murderer is a very clever man. He planned the whole thing beautifully. After he killed Wynant, he wired Macaulay, using Wynant's name, and told him to shut up the shop. Then he took Wynant's body and buried it in the shop with another man's clothes to throw us off the track. He even put a belt buckle with an R on it, hoping that we'd think it was Rosewater, an old enemy of Wynant's who dropped out of sight years ago. Oh, Morelli. Yeah? Would you mind holding your knife the other way? You're worrying Gilbert. Oh, excuse me. If that knife is missing, I'll look for it in your back. I'll help you look. Uh, well, after our hero had killed Wynett, he got a brilliant idea. He realized that he and Julia could still collect money. Wynett was supposed to be on a trip. No one knew where. So our dinner guest wrote letters to Macaulay, signing Wynett's name, so that Macaulay would continue to send the money to Julia. He even telephoned Macaulay. Uh, do you remember Macaulay? The first day that you came to see me, he telephoned that he was in town. Well, it must have been Wynett. I should have known if it weren't his voice. Oh, he was clever about that. He called when you were out. Now, that same afternoon, Julia telephoned him. She said that you were coming, Mimi, to ask about Wynett. He got terrified. He was afraid that Julia would break down and tell. So he went to Julia and killed her. And left Wynett's watch chain in her hand. Mimi, what is the story about that watch? I don't know. 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 I hope you're aware. Uh, quiet, please. His plan was still working beautifully. The only hitch was a man named Nunheim who had found out something. So our hero bumped him off, too. But our hero overlooked just one item. The telegrams, wires, and telephones were all very well. But no one had seen Wynett. So the murderer picked on poor Mimi here to strengthen his case. Mimi is the only one at this table who can tell us who the real murderer is. Mimi? Who was it told you to say you'd seen Wynett? Nobody told me. I did see him. What did he pay you, Mimi, to stick to that story? It isn't a story. It's true. I did see Wynant. He's not dead. You're lying, Mimi. <gasps> but then you'd do anything for money. You're getting a good price for saying you saw Wynant. I'm not going to stay here and be insulted. Sit down. You're getting a good price, Mimi. But don't forget this. Two other people were in with him on this deal. Julia and Nunheim. When he thought they might spill something, he bumped them off. 
You ought to know darn well that he's not going to take any chances on you. What do you want to do? Be mixed on his list? No, no. Then who is he? Who paid you that money? Macaulay. Oh, 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 you dirty little... Oh, 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 oh. I think that'll hold him. Oh, boy, oh, boy, what a wallet. Hey, nice work, Mr. Charles. There's your man, Inspector. Mr. Macaulay. I can't believe it. What do you want me to do? Wrap him up in cellophane? Pick him up and get him out of here. Come on, boys. Let me get a hand. Yes, you took him. I knew you would. Yeah, another case like this, and I'd have been a prize fighter. Oh, Nicky, you're grand. You're glorious. I bet you say that to all the boys. I'm going to get them back out here in a minute to talk to you. As you know, these broadcasts from the Lux Radio Theater are quite an event in Hollywood. And among our many friends here tonight is one of the greatest stars of the silent pictures. I admired her from afar when she was doing such magnificent spectacles as Cleopatra. And I was just an extra. Today, she is the wife of one of our leading film directors. I've known her for many years as a most charming and gracious lady. And I want you to meet her now, Miss Theda Barrett. Thank you, Woody. Our Hollywood entertainment has certainly developed amazingly since I was making pictures. Yes, everything's different now. As you and I know, uh. before pictures grew up and started to talk, we had to translate all emotion into pantomime. Oh, you may think you have trouble today, but do you remember the difficulties we had working with a split screen? We had to express jealousy, hate, love, or devotion, all in pantomime. And at the same time, keep pace as the director guided us with a one, two, three, four, just as a metronome guides a pianist. Pantomime has always been one of the greatest arts. And may I say, Miss Barra, I have always thought that you were one of the greatest masters of that art. Oh, you're very kind, Woody. We worked awfully hard making those pictures. For instance, in making Cleopatra, we had no research department at the studio. I worked myself for months with the curator of Egyptology at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. It's great fun, though. I understand, Miss Barry, you're going to make some radio appearances. Yes, I am. Oh. And I'm also going to do some motion picture work. No, that's good news. I'm considering an offer now, running through scripts and ideas. Oh, I just hope everyone will be as happy about another few of our picture as I am. The public has been very good to me in the past. And I know they'll be awfully glad to see you again. I'm sure it'll be a great thrill not only seeing you, but hearing your voice. Thanks, Miss Barry, for joining us tonight. I'm glad I could. Good night. Hearing Peter Barrett talk of her plans brings to my mind some other plans I've heard discussed in Hollywood this week. Picture people are talking about Charlie Chaplin's recent statement that he will start work on a new picture very shortly. Miss Paulette Goddard will be starred. Chaplin will write and direct, but will not act in it. A disappointment to many of us. Barbara Stanbrick and Robert Taylor are starting a new picture today. And I'm tickled to death that I got the job directing. <clears throat> it's called His Brother's Wife. Speaking of Bob Taylor, there's a lad who is going places. He's got a great future. And sometime in that future, he's going to do Armand to Greta Garbo's Camille. Bill Powell and Myrna Loy here are interested in the making of MGM's picture, The Good Earth. Louise Rayner, who is with them in the great Ziegfeld, and Paul Muni of the stars. And now Bill Powell and Myrna Loy are coming out on the stage. Arise, Bill. Myrna. <laughs> Kids, you did a great show. You're really marvelous. What, no retakes? <laughs> no, no property man. Yeah, Bill, I'll bet you're glad my property man isn't here. Remember how he used to swatch you with a broomstick when you weren't hurrying on the set fast enough? Yes, that Harry Alves is a great fellow. He's the most independent of cut in the whole picture business. Listen, Bill, that fellow was with me in the Arctic when we made Eskimo. He was with me in African jungle when we made Trader Horn. And after a man has handled crocodiles, sharks, pythons, and polar bears, you can't expect him to be afraid of a mere actor. Yeah, there's, there's only one thing I can ever understand about that picture, uh, Eskimo, Woody. How did they tell you from the polar bears? He wore rubbers. I wore a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Must be pretty tough, Woody, when you have to prowl through swamps, jungles, <laughs> tropics, and the Arctic. I suppose when you call up and say you're going on location, your wife says, uh, oh, yes, location. Do you want the snowshoes or the snake bite medicine? Uh. 
Unfortunately, she doesn't say that. When I say I'm going on location, she just says, uh, you are not. <laughs> Incidentally, I thought all about that traveling, uh, I thought all about it when the Lux Soap people asked me to do this broadcast. Isn't it funny? In the Arctic, soap is something they like to eat. In the tropics, they use soap for money. And here in Hollywood, soap is something that keeps the stars beautiful. Now, I can see that it keeps mine beautiful, Woody, but uh, when are you going to start using that? Nice soap, soap. nice soap. <laughs> <laughs> but I do use it that, and that's no kidding. Anyway, thanks for coming up, kid. Goodbye, Woody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Before I tell you about next week's show, I'm going to ask our announcer, Mr. Rick, to tell you about more about the cast and about Hollywood studios who are cooperating with us. Our cast of characters tonight, Nick, William Powell, Nora, Myrna Loy, Mimi, Minagondo, Macaulay, Porter Hall, Dorothy, Barbara Luddy, Gilbert, William Henry, Chris Jorgensen, Brett Morrison, Julia Wolf, Margaret Brayton, Inspector Guild, Thomas Jackson, Morelli, Wally Mayer, Nunheim, Ernie Adams. Our director, W.S. Van Dyke, and our stars, William Powell and Myrna Loy, appeared through courtesy of Metro-Golden-Mayer, as did Mr. William Henry, and Porter Hall through the courtesy of Paramount. The musical director of this program, Mr. Louis Silvers, appeared through the kindness of 20th Century Fox. And now, here is your producer, Mr. W.S. Van Dyke. Thanks to all of you in the cast. You did a swell job. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, the Lux Radio Theater is going to have a great show for you, and believe me, L. Jolson and Ruby Keeler are going to be here to appear in burlesque. It was a smash hit on Broadway and then a great moving picture. And now it's going to make a marvelous radio vehicle for L. Jolson and Ruby Keeler. I think you'll like it. Radio Theater in time to, to, to produce Burlesque. And you know he'll give you a great show. I've enjoyed being with you all, and good night. Broadcasting System.